Community manager for the DAO, so led the crisis response effort for the DAO hack and first parody multi sig hack from every angle. He is the co founder of White Hat Group and led the creation of Token Engineering Commons. Griff Green is advisor for Polygon ID, Polygon Hermes, Bright ID, Doing Good, and Stuart for Gitcoin, ENS, and Optimism. Griff? Yeah, right? Come on. <laughs> Griff also leads two crypto-focused Burning Man camps. Let's hear it for Griff Green. Yeah, people forget I lead Burning Man camps too. It's uh, too much, too much. Yeah, that's my slides. Oh, thank God. So, uh, hi. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm going to talk about something that doesn't get talked about too much. No, actually, we talk about this a fair amount in the Ethereum space. And I, but I, what we don't, what we miss is that it's a huge opportunity. In fact, I would argue it's the biggest opportunity in the Web3 space, and no one's talking about it as an opportunity. It's public goods. Public goods, <laughs> thank you. Uh, public goods are, it's a huge industry. Pro one of the largest industries in the world and it's like the opportunities are endless. No one is making money in the public goods space right now. It's led by governments and nonprofits and yet it's a $25 trillion a year industry. As in governments and nonprofits are spending, not investing, spending. $25 trillion a year to provide public goods for societies around the world. This is 25 times the total crypto market cap being spent every year. And it's being spent at a loss. It's being spent by governments and nonprofits. So this is, uh, you know, public goods are one of the four types of economic goods. And I'm sure a lot of people have seen this slide or something like it before. But I want to talk about it in a little bit of a different way. Because in my opinion, these are, these are like places where things end up, but it's, it's not definitive. So on the left side, we have private goods and club goods. These are excludable goods. The cool thing with excludable goods is that you can have business models. Business models are like these really cool games that end up allowing people to score points in very predictable ways, right? I see money as kind of a, a point system, and the way that we coordinate around money could be thought of as like a game. Hence the game version of this slide deck. I kind of went with that theme. Uh, so businesses uh, uh, really succeed at providing excludable goods. It's the invisible hand of the market. These point systems, these business models, these games, uh, they allow for the invisible hand to just coordinate everything effortlessly because everyone uses profit as a shelling point. Everyone's on the same game. They're all trying to win, get the high score. Uh, but in the, the non-excludable side, as in half of the t different types of economic goods, uh, there is not this game, right? The game is taxes and donations, which I would argue is like sacrifice. People have to sacrifice to provide value in, in the non-excludable side. So this is common pool resources and public goods. But I just call them all public goods. Non-excludable goods, public goods. So, uh, for, but what's really interesting about this slide that people don't really talk about enough is that, for instance, fish in a bay, it's a common pool resource. But actually in practice, fish in a bay, governments actually move fish in a bay from being non-excludable and they make it into a club good. They make it excludable by requiring people to have a fishing license. So right now in, in our normal society, because there's great systems in place to manage excludable goods, non-excludable goods often get privatized. They, get, ex they become excludable. And we move them over here because we have such great systems in place. But what if we could create great systems that allow for win-wins on this side of the chart? What if we could actually take things that are normally excludable and make them non-excludable. What if we could create abundance for society and, and take care of the less fortunate in society by creating systems that actually work? We don't have a choice. We need to do this. We're failing at the game. Uh, the collective needs game. 
the environment, uh, just general global coordination is really shitty, like full stop. And if we don't fix it, we're in huge trouble. But we are fixing it. It's already happening. Actually, so many people in Web3 are building a new way to coordinate on a global level and in win-win systems. They're optimizing the games that are being played and, and creating new games that actually allow for innovation. And this is what I'm going to talk about mostly today. I'm going to talk about all the cool projects in Web3. Well, so I'm going to highlight a few of the many awesome projects in Web3 that are trying to get to this solar punk future that we all want. And I really want to create this framing that, so that you guys can understand to get to this future, we need to build win-win systems where, that allow the people to coordinate effortlessly. So where do we start? Well, governments have a lot of funding. This is not where we start. When governments fail to provide public goods that are in demand, people start nonprofits. Nonprofits are the seed of the revolution. When people don't like what they're, the services they're getting, they start nonprofits. And nonprofits need our help more than, more than governments, by far. Nonprofits are literally just burning money all the time. Everyone who's participating in the nonprofit system in some way or another is sacrificing. And it's tragic because they're creating so much value. And you know it's creating a lot of value because it's a huge industry. Sure, it's not 25 trillion, but I think $500 billion being donated a year just in the US is big enough of an opportunity for us to make some major headway. So the cool thing is this is already happening. You know, I feel like in 2016, 2017, this stuff was a dream. We're like, we're working towards this, but we're in a place where there's so many awesome projects that are doing it. And I kind of want to create a separation between two types of, uh, donate, of economic games that are being played. Uh, of different models, we'll say, of public goods funding. So there's the donation games, which are amazing, right? Uh, we're always going to have donations. Donations make people feel good, right? And these types of donation games uh, that, that are being played in Web3, uh, the donation games rely on donations to fund public goods. Now, often they create incentives for more donations, whether it's social or straight up financial. Uh, that the, there's usually some kind of system in place to optimize the donation system and make it more fun, uh, especially by giving governance to participants. It's very common. Uh, the economic games actually skip the donation side. They rely on supply and demand to put fund public goods. This creates really interesting entrepreneurial opportunities for participants in the system, and it allows that invisible hand to actually make some headway. And uh, just like donation games, they give governance, governance to participa participants. I can't overstate this enough. It's so cool in the Web3 space. You know, in the public goods funding space normally, it's very top-down capital controlled. Governments say, we're doing this. Nonprofits have donors, and the donors say, we're doing this. This is what the money is earmarked for. But in Web3, we, we build systems that allow it to be bottom-up and where the participants, not just capital participants, but through reputation systems and other, other systems that we have, uh, there's a plethora, like you saw council, there's so many cool ways to provide governance for the players that are playing the game. So let's start with donation games. So one of the landmark donation games that was started uh, in, in the Web3 space are these grant DAOs. So Moloch, Meta Cartel, Meta Gamma Delta. These, these things are uh, a fundamental building block in I think almost every uh, public goods funding uh, piece. And I, I should have put Dow House on here. I want to give like huge shout out to Dow House. Like those guys are on the forefront of this stuff, innovating all over the place. And there's somebody to watch. Like one of the things I want you to pay attention to is these are the projects that are going to be leading this new industry that's emerging. And Dow House is important. So the way Grant Dow's work, it's basically a social club, you could say, a donation club, where when you put money into the DAO, you get non-transferable tokens that allow you to govern the pot of funds. And if you don't like how the DAO is going, you kind of have a money back guarantee. You can rage quit, get your money back out. So it's a really cool social system that in the end has collected millions of dollars for donations in, Ethereum, in the Ethereum public goods space especially. One of the biggest donation games, of course, is quadratic funding. 
Quadratic funding is a really cool system that emerged out of the radical exchange community, uh, the Radical Markets book. And uh, ClearFund and Gitcoin have implemented it. And of course, Gitcoin has raised somewhere around $70 million for public goods using this donation game. Yeah, a round of applause for Gitcoin. Those guys, man. And I should probably say us, because many of us are GTC holders in the crowd. I see you. I see you out there. Uh, so the Gitcoin DAO has this, has been managing, is starting to manage the quadratic funding system. And it's a really interesting game, because uh, I, the, the foundational layer is the public goods funding team. They are able to talk to big wigs in the Ethereum space that have a lot of money that want to fund public goods to get a big matching pool. So this is why it's a donation game for sure. I mean, it's clearly a donation game, but there's it doesn't work without a really large matching pool. And the larger the matching pool, the more interesting it is to donate to these projects. So uh, the, the governance over this matching pool actually happens from each donor. So if you donate, uh, the more each project can get a share of the matching funds, they get more of a share if there's more people and more money donated to the project. Uh, and of course, it's a complicated equation, I'm not going to say, but it's really cool as a participant in the system because you're like, okay, if I donate a dollar, they'll get $27. Wow, that's 20x, 27%, or sorry, 27x my, times my donation. That's amazing. But if I donate $100, then $250 bucks will go to the project. So I'm allocating $250 out of the matching pool. How much do I donate? You know, and it's kind of a fun game. Uh, this is the best part about all this Web3 stuff. It's fun to play. You know, donations usually are not this fun. The next donation game is protocol funding. Now, it kind of feels like it's not a donation, but, uh, you know, this, protocol funding is really led by Optimism, ENS, Polygon Hermes, and BitDAO. And basically, they're taking a percentage of the fees that they're collecting and allocating that to public goods. Now, this is, uh, this is basically like a Web3 B Corp, a benefit corporation in the States, where it's baked into their mission statement that they're going to support public goods. And Optimism has one of the coolest systems because they even add this retro public goods funding piece to it, where they can find, they can get nonprofits or, or people who are developing open source code to go find investment, knowing that they could get a grant later if they succeed. And it's, it creates an even another system on top of it. It's super cool. Uh, my favorite donation game, and I'm a little biased, is uh, GiveBacks. So GiveBacks is a pretty simple one. Whenever you donate to a, a verified project on Giveth, 100% of the donation goes to the project, and the donors get up to 75% back in Give tokens streamed over time. So what's really crazy about this is if you donate $100, then you will get $75 uh, in give, up to $75 in give, back into your, like, for donating. Part of that will be liquid, so you can sell it, you can donate it, you can play the next game that we'll talk about. And the other part is streamed to you over time, um, until like 2026. So if the give token goes up, because it's a volatile currency, you could even get more money than you donated which is crazy. You know, this is the kind of stuff that can only happen in Web3. Give power is really important for the Giveth roadmap. It just, we're, we're in a phased rollout for the launch, and it just launched the first part, the staking and locking piece, uh, two weeks ago. Major shout out to Lauren Luce, who uh, runs that piece of it, uh, runs the economy. Uh, Give, give power is really important to give it in this in in the evolve in, like to evolve nonprofits to the end goal. Uh, one of the big mission of Giveth is to take nonprofits, meet them where they are, and eventually help them create their own economic game so that they can be basically an impact town. And give power will be the first opportunity that many of these projects have to make a win-win offer to their donors. So. Let's say you're a project, someone just donates 100 bucks to you, you know that they just got give tokens, right? So you go and you tell them, hey, with give power, you can stake your give tokens behind my project. You earn a sick APR, and I get benefits on the platform. 
So specifically, they'll the project will get higher up on the on the ranking list, you know, where uh, where they come up, so it'll come up faster from to be seen by more people, and they will also get more givebacks for their donors. So uh, you're basically with Give Power, the Give Token holders are voting. They don't even know they're voting. They're just supporting. They're just staking behind their favorite projects, but they're voting for how givebacks are distributed. So it's kind of a cool economic game tied with with a donation game, and uh, the but the coolest thing is this psychological shift that projects have to get to make when they say, hey, you can earn a yield while supporting me, as opposed to you can sacrifice while supporting me. So the really, the, my favorite part of the Web3 public goods funding stream, though, is the economic games. In the donation games, donations are always part of it, which means there's a little bit of sacrifice injected into the system. That makes it really hard to have that invisible hand making magic. But in economic games, it's win-win all the way. And this happens through issuance. So Ethereum and Bitcoin and all the blockchains are, in my opinion, public infrastructure. Like in a city, the water or, or electrical infrastructure. Yes, you have to pay a bill. You have to pay a water bill, electrical bill, or you have to pay transaction fees on the, to use the blockchain. But the infrastructure itself is the access to the tooling is a public good. That's why this infrastructure is usually funded by governments. But with blockchains, it's funded by issuance. And that's the key for these economic games. Issuance is sent to people who are providing good work, right? So in Ethereum, it's the miners and now, are now the stakers. Uh, blockchain, uh, Bitcoin, it's the miners. But there were some really cool innovations that many people have forgotten about or never heard of in 2013, 2014 that actually use this to do direct public goods funding. Zcash actually supports uh, crypt cryptographic research. Uh, this is, without this protocol, it would, I doubt we'd have rollups today. And, uh, and it's just the block reward. And then Namecoin, Primecoin, Curecoin, these are these bottom threes. They're crazy. Like, no, very few people actually even follow these projects, but they're runaway economic games. Primecoin, to mine a block in Primecoin, you have to find a new prime number. People are mining blocks every day. Every minute, there's a new prime number found by Primecoin. And I doubt most of this room has never even heard of it. But it's a runaway economic machine. And no, one has, is, no one's donating. No one's paying taxes. People are just getting the block reward for finding, finding prime numbers. Namecoin was actually the first fork of Bitcoin. And it's kind of like ENS. Does anyone have a dot .bit domain? No hands. OK, cool. You can. It's infrastructure that exists, even though no one's using it. It's amazing. And CureCoin's folding proteins for cancer research one block at a time. It's so cool. They're using issuance, and, and the, but it's in the digital space. What's exciting is this move towards bringing it to meat space. So like Panvala subsidizes communities like Bitcoin subsidizes security. They're using issuance to actually support community groups. To, to meet and share ideas. And uh, rainbow rolls and public nouns, this is the NFT style. It's not all fungible tokens playing games. Rainbow rolls uh, sold like 900 NFTs and funded Gitcoin matching rounds, helped, helped support some Giveth projects, and also wiped away $7 million of medical debt from random Americans that they, that they were able to buy up their medical debt. Incredible project. No one donated. People bought NFTs they could sell. There's upside. Public nouns. It just started two weeks ago again by the Dow House crew. Uh, it's kind of like a Mullock Dow, but instead of the shares being non-transferable, it's an NFT that's worth one vote in governing the treasury, right? And the intention is to spend it on public goods. So it's super cool, and it's, it's basically a Mullock Dow, and instead of rage quitting and getting less, you could actually potentially sell your NFT for more than you paid for it. Token Engineering Commons is another amazing economic game. Uh, this is in partnership with the Common Stack. This is the first Commons the Common Stack ever launched. It's really cool. It uses a bonding curve, which um, I don't know. How many people have heard of bonding curves? Oh my god, this is a smart crew. So for the ones that didn't raise their hands, a bonding curve, especially a token bonding curve, is a very simple smart contract that when you send it money, it mints a token. 
and, if you, and it holds that money in the contract. And if you send the token back, it will release the collateral and burn the token. This will win a Nobel Prize in economics. I promise you this. Simon de la Rubier, Bancourt, they created something that has never been seen before. This is a one-sided market, and it solves a liquidity issue for, uh, mar for small market cap tokens. Like, Panvalo is super cool, right? I said it before. Uh, but when, uh, when they issued, when they issued uh, their token, it had no value at first. And eventually, uh, Uniswap it found its way to Uniswap, and it created a, a value. But it still has very low liquidity. With a token bonding curve uh, economy, it doesn't have that issue. It starts out with infinite liquidity because uh, issuance is dependent on demand, which is super cool. And it uses fees throughout the system uh, when people are issuing or minting or burning tokens. A percentage of the fees go to the common pool. And also at launch, a percentage uh, of the launch goes to the bootstrap, the common pool. Really interesting system that we, that we at Giveth really hope to learn from and apply to our end game, which is GURBS. So <laughs> GURBS. GURVs are actually uh, bonding curves backed by Giveth, by Give Tokens. And they're kind of the, the sweet spot at the end of the rainbow, the treasure at the end of the rainbow for every nonprofit who comes on to Giveth. If, uh, if, so, first, of course, you're a nonprofit, someone donates to you, the donor gets Give Tokens, right? Now, with Give Power, people are locking capital, they're locking Give Tokens behind a project. There's capital being locked behind each project that's that that's participating in Give Power. With that locked up capital, we can launch a bonding curve. And the bonding, of course, like, you know, there's a lot of cultural stuff that goes into this. And talk, working with the common stack to launch more commons and to understand the, the different reputation systems and the other kind of looking at uh, projects like council and how do we govern these systems so it's not just capital, it's not just the bonding curve that creates governance tokens, but there's other governance involved. This is the, we're, 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 sorry I'm ranting, but long story short, we're still in the research phase on how to launch these impact DAOs with bonding curves. But once we figure that out, once we work with the common stack to actually understand the best ways of doing these things and making it easy for nonprofits, any nonprofit could launch its own impact DAO through the Giveth uh, system. Coolest thing about everything that I'm talking about is that none of these things are in silos. Web3 is so amazing for its configurability, for its, everything can kind of plug into each other. Everything I mentioned is public goods Legos. Like the na public nouns DAO could actually donate Ethereum on Giveth and uh, support Gitcoin grants, incentivizing uh, lots of grants on Gitcoin to get funding for, through extra donations. And then once, and then they'll get givebacks. They'll get more give tokens that they could further donate to other projects, or they could stake and give power, or one day they could use to invest in an impact DAO using a GURV. Public Goods Legos is where the real benefits here. This is where this 20, this is why Web3 is going to save the world, you know, because we can plug in all these ideas into each other and build a new industry that never existed. So I'm sure a lot of you are builders. A lot of you have like an impact project that you want to see uh, have have an impact, become an impact DAO. And maybe some of you are just, you know, hey, I'm just a passive supporter of these projects and would like some upside. Well, I've, I've founded a lot of projects in the space. I want to highlight three of them that maybe could, part, could help everyone get involved more in the public good space. So first is General Magic. Uh, probably many of you have never heard of General Magic. It's been running around for well over a year. And it's a service DAO that actually has helped many organizations. Panvala, Giveth, Token Engineering Commons, Common Stack, and uh, countless others. And uh, like ENS, we just built the ENS Swag Shop, which is super cool. Uh, so if you, if you are looking to, if you're building in this space and you need some support, you don't have a good designer, or you even just want to offload a full project, or you just want a swag shop, or you want to integrate praise, uh, a reputation system. You can reach out to us at General Magic. We'll help you. Uh, we, are, we give insane rates in the crypto space because this is, you know, kind of an has an altruistic swing to it, even though it is a for-profit company. Uh, so it's, I would say it's about half the market rate. So definitely reach out to us, and we can support you in building the next public goods Legos for me to talk about. 
Uh, And I have a huge announcement from the Commons stack. We're actually launching a new service where we want to help you launch a Commons. So we're supporting, we launched the Token Engineering Commons, or we helped the Token Engineering Commons launch, I should say. And we're working with Grassroots Economics to support them in their launch. And now we actually have the bandwidth to support a few more Commons. So if you want a bonding curve, you have an impact project, and you're like, yeah, let's let's do this thing. I want to learn about collaborative economics. I want to design from the bottom up. Uh, with my community, mission, vision, values, uh, parameterize the, the economy, like you guys, the, the community would do it themselves instead of us. Uh, reach out and let's work together on that. And of course, Giveth. Uh, Giveth has a token, and this token is going to be the lifeblood of a new industry. And it's a really easy, passive way to get involved if you want to become part of the Giveth DAO and support this, econ- this uh, emerging economy. Uh, definitely talk to me and I can help you out. I can help you out with it. basically any. If you're working in the public good space, I want to talk to you. I want to work together. This is, there is no competition in public goods. How can you compete when you're creating abundance for society, right? All right. Thank you so much. I'll be right outside and, and we can chat.